Welcome back to a new episode. My name is Stefan from openschoolsolutions.org and today we're going to talk about PF Blocker NG. If you want to set up a web filter in your school network or home network, you have two options if you want to use PFSense. So first is you can use Squid or and SquidGuard to set up a proxy server and then uh, yeah, SquidGuard for filtering your websites or you can use pfblockerng and today we're going to talk about this uh, add-on for pfsense because it's great to filter advertisement malicious content spammers or yeah malware and other things you don't want to have in your network so why pfblockerng pfblockerng is an active developed um, add-on for pfsense it's very easy to set up in the one of the latest versions and it has many features, very flexible to yeah to adjust to your needs. Both pfblocker ng and also squidguard, they filter at DNS level and also IP level. It means um, when you use pfsense as your DNS server, it will filter your filter your website on every device in your network. So you don't have to set up like add-ons for your browser on every device. You can just set it up on your firewall and pfsense, and then it filters for the whole network. The first thing we're going to do is to install PF Blocker NG. So we go to System and then Packet Manager. Here you go to Available Packages and we're looking for PF Blocker NG and we're going to install the development version because this is the most recent version. Okay, install. And now PFSense is going to download and install the package. Okay, package is installed and completed. So we can go to firewall and then here we find PF blocker ng. So if you want to if you set up the first time, you will see this assistant here, this wizard and it helps you to configure PF blocker ng. So we click here next. So here we have some infos uh, what the setup will do. It will set up and configure pflogger ng. It's, with, it's just an entry level default configuration. And if you have previously configured pflogger ng, all settings will be wiped. And so it will install some rules for IP addresses to block uh, the worst offenders and also for DNS block lists. DNS BL will add some lists to block adverts and malicious domains. Okay, next. Here we have to select our inbound and outbound interface. So inbound is normally your WAN address, uh, your WAN interface, and outbound is here your LAN interface. If you have multiple interfaces like uh, Wi-Fi or uh, DMZ or whatever, and you want to filter for that interfaces too, you have to select them here in this list. But here we have just simple web setup. We have our WAN interface for inbound connections and for outbound we have land interface. So we click next. Then this is very important. We have a VIP address. The VIP address is the address where our PF blocker ng web server is running and it has to be an address that's not in use and uh, best would be not in one of the networks you use. So we have a um, 192.168 network. So 10.10.10.1 is fine here in our setup. So we leave this and also the ports we can leave them like they are here and then click next and yeah that's all we press finish and now the setup is almost done now we're here on the pf blocker ng update website and you can see that um, it starts to download all the updates it will download the missing dns block list ip block list and then re um, load them here on the firewall. Update processed finished and we have now a running PF blocker ng setup running that help us to block advertisement and malicious websites in our network on all of our devices. Next we will talk about some settings. So first you go to a general tab and here we can see it's enabled keep settings so you can set up how often um, the update should be run. It's default to every hour, but you can set like once a day or every 12 hours if you want. This means how often does uh, blocker ng updates your lists. And then we go to the IP tab and 
here we have some other interesting settings. So the first one we go down here and if you have multiple interfaces, uh, multiple internal network interfaces, I would recommend to enable floating rules. So you have all your firewall rules on the floating rules tab and not for every interface. But depends how you want, how you like it. You can keep it or just enable it. I would really recommend to en enable kill states. So if you have a connection to a website and then pfblockerng updates the list and then this website or this IP will be on the block list, then it will reset kill all the states and so it's blocked right away. Okay, we click here, save IP settings and then we talk about GeoIP. GeoIP configuration is important if you want to block uh, specific regions um, from accessing your web server, for example, you're running in your network. Um, then you need to create a new account here on for the MaxMind GeoIP database. Just click here, create a new account, and then you get a license key. Okay then save and you see every time we will change settings um, they are applied when Chrome is running or if we do a false update or false reload so if I change setting here it's not changed right away you have to go to update and then reload and all and then click run so now um, we see it's downloading our GIP lists and reloading all the other lists too. Okay, update is done. We can go now to IP and then Geo IP. And here we can select for, for example, top spammers. We can go to deny both. And uh, we can click here on the, we can change. Okay, so we want to block, for example, all the, the top spammers from all these countries. So we're going to select all of them and then list action deny both and then we're going to save it here. Okay, good. Then we have all the other countries here on top. For example, if we have the running web server in our network and we want to block access from people from Africa or spammers, whatever, we just go here, uh, select Africa, and then we select all these countries. And what's oh, the long list? Select all these countries. And then here, list action, we say deny inbound. So we want to block all inbound connections. We could also block outbound connection, but that would mean that clients from our network couldn't reach websites that are hosted in Africa. So we leave it inbound because that's what we want. We want to block access from these areas of the world. And so be careful. For example, if you want to, if you block in North America or Europe with deny outbound, all your clients won't be able to access websites in these areas that are hosted there. Okay, so deny inbound. And we would also select uh, IPv6 here and just select all of them and then save okay good we can do this for all the other continents too and it will update if you go to update and then uh, update or reload all the next thing we talk about is dnsbl dnsbl is all the dns block lists so it will block the um, websites based on the domain and we can click here on dnsbl groups and here we have the groups that are already configured during setup so we have easy list um, ads collection and malicious uh, collection and they're all inbound and updated once a day okay when we go to feeds we can see all the different feeds that are enabled so here we have many different lists and you can see if there's a check mark they are enabled and if there's a plus sign you can add them to your list so for example um, let's say you want to enable 
easy list uh, French. We click here on the plus and then we are here in the list. We see the state is off and we just enable it on. Okay, it's all we have to do. And then we scroll down and say save DNSPL settings. So next time we update our settings, it will download the list and put it in the configuration. In this list, there are lots of feeds and it's really recommend not to enable all feed at once, just the ones you really need. And you can see there are lots of feeds you can just enable with a click. But sometimes you want to add a feed that is not in this list. So you can go ahead to DNSPL and then go to DNSPL groups and we will add a new group here. Add. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to add some house from Stephen, Stephen Black. And Stephen Black is well known for, for his lists. And we just want to say, okay, let's say we want to block gambling websites. So we have the unified host here and gambling. So we copy the list here from his repository. Uh, copy link location and go back to our DNSBL settings. Here we have the source definition and we enter our uh, URL, say on and give it a label and we select action unbound. And then we're done. Save DNSBL settings and now we have the Stephen Blacklist here in our list. Okay, so we forgot to enable the frequency, so it's enough if we update once a day. Then other settings. Here we have DNSBL Safe Search. If you want to enable Safe Search redirection, just select Enable here. You can select here some YouTube restrictions, moderate or strict. Just leave moderate. And then if you want to block DNS over HTTPS, for Firefox, then enable it here. So DNS requests are not encrypted or blocked if Firefox wants to do this. Okay, save. For example, you have a website that's blocked, but you want to unblock it. You want to put it on the whitelist. You can do if you go to DNSBL and then scroll down here to um, DNSBL whitelist, press on the plus, and now we see we have some uh, domains here in the list already. So if you have the domain you want to whitelist, you can just uh, press enter here and add a new domain. For example, I want to add uh, my domain openschoolsolutions.org. If I put it just the name like it is here, the domain name, then it will whitelist openschoolsolutions.org. If I put a dot before the domain name, before the domain name, it will unblock all the subdomains too. So it whitelist all of the Open School Solutions domains and not just the main domain itself. Okay, good. Then save DNSBL settings. Okay, I think we are done. So we go to update, and now we are going to reload all our updates. Okay, update is finished. Now I want to check if our blocking is working. So if we want to look up a domain, for example, like uh, onebet.com, we see we get an answer from our uh, PF block ng. And if I go here to onebet.com, we will be greeted with the PF and block ng website. Our website is blocked, that's what we want. And our PF block ing web filter for pfSense is working. But there's one problem left. The blocking only works if the devices in our network uses pfSense as their DNS server. So we have to add a rule to our firewall that all requests to other DNS servers are blocked and only requests to our pfSense DNS server is allowed. Okay, so we go back here to our firewall go to rules, firewall and then rules. And then here in, we go to LAN and here we see the block lists from uh, pfblockng and we will add a list on top of that. 
So the first is we want to block all access to other DNS servers. So what we are going to do is we go here, select protocol TCP and UDP and source doesn't matter, but destination, everything that's DNS here will be blocked. Okay, so let's say block DNS to everything else, save. Okay, so every request to a DNS server will be blocked. But now we have a problem because requests are also blocked for our PFSense. So we need to add a rule, a pass rule for our LAN that access to our PFSense is allowed. So destination is our LAN address and port is DNS again. And this is like pass DNS to firewall, save. We have now the rule that access is allowed to our pfSense uh, LAN address, DNS, and all requests to other DNS servers are blocked. Okay, apply changes. Good. So that's all we have to do. And now all the devices in our network have to use pfSense as a DNS server. And so all the requests are filtered by pfBlockNG and that's what we want. That's it for today. We have now a running pfBlockerNG web filter running here on our pfSense firewall. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I see you in the next video. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more videos about open source software that you can use in your school.